Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about kombucha versus kefir soda. What's the difference? What are the health benefits? Um, and what can we learn about these different drinks and all the things they can do? Now, kombucha and kefir soda are both fermented probiotic drinks. And man, they're so delicious and they're very, very good for you. They are bubbly, living, raw beverages that tend to have a mind of their own. They ferment differently in the winter than in the summer. So understanding the process can make a huge difference. Temperature is everything when it comes to these drinks. Now, both of these drinks have a special probiotic yeast called Saccharomyces boulardii. And it's one of the most researched probiotics and has been used worldwide to support gastrointestinal health, and it's also really interesting because S. Pilardii is what makes it bubbly. And it's re- this type of good yeast, because we need good yeast too, is resistant to antibiotics, resistant to heat and stomach acid. And it is a super important part of the drink that makes it um, have all the bubbles and the deliciousness that people like. So now, kombucha and kefir soda are made differently. Kombucha is prepared by adding a starter tea. You use about a cup of starter tea of kombucha and a kombucha culture, which is called a scoby, and you add that to sweet tea. The mixture is then fermented for up to 7 to 14 days, depending on temperature, and then it turns into this bubbly, effervescent drink. Now, remember that the sugar that's in these drinks, because you do need to add sugar to these drinks, is eaten up by the culture, and that's what they use to make probiotics probiotics, and to make it bubbly. So don't be afraid of the sugar. The sugar is not for you. It's for the microbes. Now we have all the information on how to make kombucha on our site. If you go to culturefoodlife.com and you'll see a little smiley pot on the menu bar that says start here. And you'll click down, you'll see a drop down and you'll see the list of kombucha, how to make it, what you need, FAQs, recipes, lots and lots of things on there to help you be successful making kombucha. Now, kefir soda is different. It's made with a starter culture. It's a powder culture um, made up of different bacteria and yeast. And then what you do is you add that, that starter culture to juice or coconut water. And then you use half juice, half water, and then you ferment it. And the very first bottle will take about five days to make. But then after that, once you have a bottle, you can use that bottle to make another bottle and then that bottle to make another bottle. And it just goes on forever. It, uh, it'll keep doing it if you do it often enough. And then you just take like a half a cup of that bottle and then you add half juice and half water again. And the good news is that it will ferment in less than a day. Sometimes that again depends on temperatures, but it ferments very, very fast. So um, it's easier to make once you get it going. And I just, I just made two bottles this morning and they'll probably be ready by late tonight or tomorrow morning. So it's really fun to make too. And I have detailed instructions on how to do that the same place. Go to the start menu, go to culturefoodlife.com, and you'll see the little start menu with the little smiley pot that says start here. And you'll you see that drop down and you can click key for soda how to make it. It shows you how. Um, now, these special microbes in fermented foods have really taught me more about who I am than anything else I've ever encountered. I, I mean, we're all 100 trillion bacteria. And they do just about a million processes that nobody can understand because it's all going on in this invisible world inside of you. Um, But I really believe that these microbes are governing so many things that people are not aware of. And it's becoming more and more in the news and in the headlines that people are starting to realize that when they kill some of these bacteria that are so prominent that are helping us digest our foods, keep our immune system running strong, reduce inflammation, um, keep things like diabetes and high blood pressure at bay. All of these microbes do all of this, but we're just unaware of it. And there's more research is catching up to all that. And that's why I keep doing these podcasts and articles every week. So I'd really have a hard time to choose between kombucha or kefir soda because I really like them both. And they both have benefits um, some of them are similar, but a lot of them are different. So I would really have a hard time choosing between two, and I don't know which one I'd choose. 
So first, let, let's dive into kombucha and all of its benefits. The bacteria in use in kombucha are lactobacilli coagulans. Um, a lot of people are asking me about that particular bacteria because um, they like to make a yogurt with it. And it's, it's a very strong, it's a very different type of bacteria. But it's naturally occurring kombucha. A lot of people don't know that. We're actually coming out with a starter made from that um, to make the yogurt very, very soon, the next month or two. And so it's a, it's a great, it's a great uh, bacteria for your gut and for your health. And also in kombucha is, again, Saccharomyces boulardii. And then there's Gluconatobacter. That's in kombucha. And then there's Zygosaccharomyces kombuchianus, which I believe is another yeast. And then there's Bredonomyces that's in it. And Ectobacter is in it, as well as kombucha. And then, then Gluconobacter is also in it. Those are a mouthful to say. So... Those are the, there's a lot of good yeast in kombucha, which we need to, and they're very powerful and they, they give you a lot of health benefits along with the antibiotic resistant probiotic yeast that are in there. There is, um, many other things that can help you if you've taken an antibiotic because it's resistant to antibiotics, which is incredibly helpful if you've got to take an antibiotic. It's also resistant to heat. So that's another good thing. Um, Yeasts are are uh, different than bacteria. They don't. Sometimes they can withstand heat, where a lot of bacteria dies much faster um, at lower temperatures. Now, kombucha is great for protecting the stomach lining because it neutralizes toxins that are produced by harmful pathogens, and it sends out a signal to the body to reduce inflammation that can lead to a bunch of negative health outcomes. Inflammation is a huge cause of that. And then one of the cool things that it does is that it acts as a decoy to harmful pathogens and it attracts them and binds them with them, keeping them from attaching to the intestinal walls and doing damage. So basically think about it like this. So it acts like a pathogen. It's not a pathogen. It's a good guy. But it attracts those pathogens because they think it's one of them. It steals their food so they don't have any food and then they die and it exits the body when the um, S. boulardii dies because it only lasts a few days in the body. So then it takes it with them. It takes all those pathogens with them and cleans you out of some of those pathogenic bacteria. So it's kind of cool. Kombucha may also reduce joint pain. Um, it contains acetic acid, which not only helps with joints, but also helps with blood sugar. It's a, a lot of people do that. Um, it's what's in like apple cider vinegar, things like that. Um, that can help with blood sugar, especially if you take it before a meal. It also has a pain reliever in it and anti-arthritic compounds, which help to remove the toxins that have accumulated in the joints that cause pain and inflammation. Another compound in kombucha includes a sulfate, heparin, and hyaluronic acid that all provide lubrication and protection to existing joint tissues. And hyaluronic acid is everywhere these days. It's in foods, it's in supplements, it's in skin care because it helps to produce more collagen in the skin. It's very important for your stomach lining. It does a lot of things and, and it's becoming more and more known in mainstream. And it's a great it's it's abundant in kombucha. So and that's one of the things that helps you with joint pain. Now, my favorite thing that kombucha does is it assists the liver in detoxification. It's one of the most powerful things that um, helps your liver to rid you of so many toxins that we get in our environment. It's got glucuronic acid, which plays a huge part in um, binding with toxins, transforming them and taking them to the kidneys so they can be easily eliminated. So the liver produces a substance naturally, and but it can't always keep up with it because there's so many pollutants we come in contact with. So having this extra glucuronic acid in kombucha helps to make up all the difference. So it's a very, and you can tell, it really does detoxify you. Um, it may help you with your kidneys because it helps to eliminate those environmental pollutants. And every day your kidneys process about 200 quarts of blood to remove and eliminate chemicals and toxins. So calcium binds up these blood tissues that can cause calcification throughout the body. Um, in the, and especially in the kidneys, like kidney stones. 
and it helps to prevent that kidney stones from forming by helping to purify and remove the toxins. It also can help with constipation and diarrhea. I've seen that firsthand with a lot of people who have had chronic diarrhea and kombucha really helps with that. It really calms that down. Um, it's been used in hospitals to treat all sorts of bowel diseases, including C. diff, acute diarrhea, antibiotic-associated diarrhea, some parasitic forms of diarrhea, and other gastrointestinal disorders. Um, it has a record of helping reduce the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome as well. And I have research for all of this. If you go click on the description and click on the article, you'll see all those references that I use. It also can be preventative for the heart, the weight, weight loss, or your being overweight, cholesterol, and blood glucose. And there is a new study on kombucha published in the Journal of Food and Science that was carried out to understand the preventative effects of kombucha on the heart, weight, blood glucose, total protein, lipid profiles, and cardiac markers in, in rats with heart damage. And they found that the tea significantly decreased cholesterol, triglycerides, LDH, and VLDH while increasing the levels of good, the good cholesterol, HDLs. And similarly, a decrease in leakage of cardiac markers um, from the microcardium was also observed. And when I posted this on my Facebook page, several people commented that their cholesterol had get on, gone down quite significantly since they had started to drink kombucha. From my own self experiments on my own body, I have been I have found kombucha to be of great help to certain afflictions. And I have a whole article about the 10 reasons I have kombucha all the time because it's it's fun to see your body change when you have a food, you know, and to see the power of the fermented foods that can bring you to life in so many ways. And uh, it's it's just a way to feel great. I love it in the afternoons, sometimes in the evening. It's just a great pickup too. Now, uh, kefir soda. Let's talk about kefir soda and its benefits. Um, we handpicked the bacteria and good yeast for the kefir soda when we made it and added one of the most important bacteria, bifidobacteria, which is so important for your immune system. And um, we also had other special bacteria and we had Saccharomyces boulardii in there. And we had several lactobacillus. We had lactobacillus delbrueckii. And then the other one, Leuconostos menestroides. These, both of these bacteria are in kefir grains and are very, very powerful microbes. Leuconostos menestroides is responsible for initiating the lactic acid fermentation of dairy products, like in sauerkraut, in uh, vegetables. And it has reported that this special bacteria can inhibit the growth of pathogen. And it's also been seen to help with the avian flu. Remember when we had the bird flu many years ago? That particular strain was very effective in helping those birds to either rid themselves of the disease or recover. Now, Lactobacillus dubruckii can help the body break down food, absorb nutrients, and fight off bad organisms that may cause that may cause disease. It has also been useful to aid digestion, prevent diarrhea, and it really helps relieve symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. L. bulgarius and lactase is also powerful strains and well-studied probiotic species, which have been shown to have highly similar DNAs to L. debruki, and since they have been considered to be a subspecies of L. debruki, then they they really are considered the same type of a thing. It's interesting because anything that has the word lactobacillus in front of it, which is there's hundreds of strains that have that, it's very hard because they can have subspecies and there's so many, you can't really test to see which one you're getting um, because they're all from the same strain, but they're just subspecies of that strain. So they all act similar. Um, and it's really interesting uh, to study them and see all the different things they can do. Now, Bifidobacterium longdum has longly been regarded as one of the most beneficial members of the human gut microbiome. Lower levels of this beneficial bacteria have been shown in people who struggle and are obese and diabetic. They also are finding that people who are missing this um, that don't have very much of it if they have lupus. Um, there are so many people who have things like irritable bowel disease or inflammatory bowel disease. All of them have shown across the board that they have low levels of bifido. 
And B longdom, bifidal longdom has always helped relieve anxiety and depression-like behaviors. It can also inhibit inflammation by regulating the balance of the immune system. And it can even improve the intestinal barrier function to keep you from getting leaky gut. So it's a very, very, very important um, bacteria in your body. And it's really important to me that it's um, so much that I've made a yogurt with those those strains, with different strains of these, but Bifido in it. And uh, I teach people how to really build up their Bifido with things like HMOs, which is a prebiotic, which helps to build Bifido, which helps to strengthen your immune system hugely. So it's a very important bacteria to pay attention to. It's one of your most important. And that's one of the reasons we have it in this kefir soda. Saccharomyces boulardii is also in this soda. It's probably one of my favorite good yeasts. And it helps to make it super bub bubbly, but it also has all those health benefits. You know, it can't be killed by antibiotics. Heat is resistant to heat. There's been 53 randomized control studies encompassing 8,475 subjects that have investigated the safety and efficiency of S. boulardii. And those, many of those studies were done in pediatric and adult patients in which they found an 81% efficiency rating um, and is now used to treat C. diff, acute diarrhea, and all the um, you know, parasitic, antibiotic-associated diarrhea, just like um, I had told you about in kombucha. Now, the cool thing about S. boulardii is that it's unrelated to the yeast candida and other candida species. So when you have candida proliferating, it will decrease the acidity of the gut, making it more susceptible to harmful bacteria and yeast. S. boulardii exerts the opposite effect, producing lactic acid and other acids known to inhibit potential harmful candida yeast species. So it actually keeps you from getting candida or helps to eliminate it. Um, and since S. boulardii is really absent from a natural gut, it's not naturally in there because it's a transient yeast, that passes through the intestines after ingestion. And if you take it every day, it provides a steady stream in the colon. And when it's in three days, it is cleared from the stools two to five days later. It does not attach to the mucosal cell lining, but works its magic as it works through you through the gastrointestinal tract. And when S. boulardii is present, it inhibits those toxins from binding to intestinal receptors and steals their metabolites needed to survive, just like it does in kombucha. So then those pathogens move out of the body, unable to survive. They even found that other pathogen strains like E. coli, salmonella, um, typhi, adhere to the surface of S. boulardii and they attach themselves to it, thus preventing them from attaching to the mucosal lining, and then they pass through your body, rendering them harmless. So it's a powerful good yeast, and whether you drink kombucha or kefir soda, it's so good for you. It's a good idea just to get your... S. because it's not naturally present in the body, so it's very, very good for you. Now, we have a lot of lab results of our kefir soda, and we found, since you're doing it with either juice or coconut water, we found that it was uh, 10 times more effective if it was done with coconut water. And you still get millions and millions of good bacteria from juice, which I do a lot, but coconut water was even more powerful, which also, if you're struggling with candida, that's a good one to pick because... Coconut in itself has um, properties in it that um, are antifungal, so they go after yeast too. But one, you know, you get two billion per cup if you make it with coconut water. The only thing I need to caution you about in coconut water is to make sure that it has 20 carbs per eight ounces, because a lot of the coconut waters don't. And if it doesn't, then you'll need to add a couple teaspoons of sugar. And remember, don't freak out. The sugar's not for you. It's for the yeast, so they can make the probiotics and the espalardii. So you're not, it's not going to taste sweet at all. And if it is, you haven't let it ferment long. But coconut water is very tart tasting, but it tastes really delicious. So don't worry about that because it's not for you. Um, and I have a new recipe um, that I put out that's a green kefir soda that's really good. And it, I'm putting that on my website if you'd like to take a look. It's super powerful. It's made with coconut water. And um, I have a little video on it too. And I'll put a link. You'll see that in the article. I'll put the link description below. And you just, it really only takes like a, once you've made a bottle, the first one takes like five days. And then after that, using that as a starter, it only takes a day to make 
uh, powerful kefir soda. So these are the two sodas. I have the starter of cultures from them, and a lot of people sell kombucha starters. You just need the kombucha tea and a scoby. And uh, my kefir soda starters for sale. You guys, one package will make you like 30, 40 bottles. It's incredible. It just keeps going as long as you keep doing it on a regular basis. And uh, you'll just have fun, especially when it starts to warm up outside. It's so good. It's, it's just a really refreshing drink. And it's a really good pick-me-up, especially in the afternoon when you're looking for something. Um, there's nothing like having a kombucha or a kefir soda. They're both really great for you. I love them both. I don't ask me to choose. I can't choose. Because I like the benefits of each of them. Each of them offer a lot of different benefits. And then there's a few similar benefits. But anyway, it's just a great thing to have in your arsenal. Once, I mean, I can't believe how many people drink pop still. It's just so bad for you. High fructose corn syrup is just the worst thing ever. And um, there's so many healthy benefits to these sodas that you'll replace them in no time. It can even help you uh, detoxify from drinking sodas and especially the artificial sweeteners. They're almost worse than the real thing um, it, because they have so many side effects and they're finding out more and more that they're really not good for you. So this is my alternative for you. And the good thing is you could find things to replace the things that you like that are so much better for you and your body will thank you and you will feel the difference. And uh, there is nothing like having a probiotic bubbly drink. It's just, I mean, I think that's part of the, the, you know, well, partly the sugar too is part of the reason people drink soda so much is they have, you know, they kind of gives you something special to drink. Um, but I really caution you to uh, really start thinking about what you put in your body because that's what your body's made of. And there is not a lot of good in sugar sodas. Sugar is so harmful to you. It creates a lot of inflammation, but fructose corn syrup might even be worse. So, and artificial sweeteners are not good. Some of them kill your gut bacteria. And that's a whole other article. Um, but anyway, but these sodas help your microbiome, give your immune system a boost, keep your microbes thriving, keep them healthy, happy, and your gut healthy, um, keep your gut lining intact, and help you um, to really take care of your body in a very delicious way. So thanks for listening, guys. And uh, check out the article and the recipes. I think you'll really enjoy making these drinks. And we'll see you next time.